Hi, it's Abel1975 and today I'm bringing you an Elite Dangerous video. This is going to be me doing rare trading in my Type 7. I'm literally going to bring you speeded up footage of me doing the whole long route on the outside and then the uh, show the profits I make from the rare trading at the end. Now, I did this as an experiment to see if rare trading is still a viable option, is still a viable way to earn money. Now, the interesting thing with rare trading is it doesn't rank up or scale up on your ranks or wealth or your reputation with a certain faction you are able to earn the same amount of money from rare trade goods whether you are starting out in the game in a d-rated uh, type 6 as you are in a massively expensive trade condor um, unfortunately for me i do take my time um, because i'm an idiot i will fight any pirate that interdicts me even though i don't need to um, but hey it's extra profit on your trade running and now the reason I did this was I recorded the whole thing for two reasons. One, I wanted to time it. Two, I wanted to record how much profit I made. So I could at the end say whether this is worth it or not. Now what I didn't do, which is something I used to do when I did this properly back in the day when I was starting out, is I would run missions and other trade goods between the systems. So I basically would have EDD be open and I would look for what stuff would be able to go from say one station to the next on the trade route and I would also look in the mission board for missions that I could look to complete on my way around now there is an obviously an issue with that is that missions are quite sketchy and are more likely to change destination uh, than they used to so back in the day it was obviously it was more predictable now it's a little less predictable um, so you know you can unfortunately find yourself stuck with a mission that's now going somewhere completely different outside of the trade route but obviously if you do those two things you will make a lot more money doing this run uh, because you're going to those places anyway you may as well take other cargo on board and because you're going to those places anyway you may as well take missions that are going there doing that you will greatly increase how much money you can make but obviously it will take more time so there's a scaling factor in there also, if you're a new player starting out, you might be doing this in a stripped out Cobra and just doing like small amounts um, or a stripped out Type 6 for 96 tons. So you might not have space for a massive amount more and you might not be able to pick up some of those missions. And obviously those missions will depend on rep. So the more you go around the loop, the more profitable it will become. Uh, to start with, you'll probably get missions that don't pay very much and then you'll get missions that pay a lot more. Now, I was interested to do this to see if rare trading was still profitable because it used to generate about 2 million credits an hour um, doing this loop and that was okay and if you did the full beans taking missions stacking them doing other trading as well um, you could really up the amount you could earn but your time investment would be a lot more and um, so then it sort of became a balancing factor once you raised a rep it was really worth doing and I did for a while get it to the point where it was like taking me about an hour and a half, two hours to complete one half. Um, but I was getting about six to seven million credits by completing all of the missions that were related and doing trading between the stations. But like I say, that takes um, effort and that is a real proper space trucker grind uh, that some people would really, really not want to do. And uh, me, I love that sort of stuff. I love taking missions that are going on my route. I love stacking missions that are going on my route. Obviously, if you stack that many missions, you're going to increase the amount of chances of interdiction, which is, to me, a good thing because it's more fun. Um, also, back when I was doing this, the rare trade routes were littered with pirates. Um, but we were just starting out on Xbox, and so you had a lot of people doing rare trading in Cobras with stripped-out D-rated Cobras for jump range, and then you had pirates in A-rated Cobras with rail guns trying to stop you and steal your rare goods and it was all good fun it was all good natured a good laugh um you know the back in them days we didn't have engine modifications we didn't have engineers so it was very much a fair race to see who could get you know get out of weapons range before the pirate took down your shields it's properly good fun um, nowadays it's has rare trading been left by the wayside is the reason i did this i just wanted to see if rare trading compared with other ways of making money still stacked up as something that was viable to do uh, because as you can see from the rare trade map at the start it's not an easy thing this is quite a complex process this is something that's quite difficult to do and to manage and there's a lot of elements to it now I personally enjoy uh, that sort of thing I love space trucking and I love doing it 
I would recommend every player does it at least once because it is a great way of visiting some of the key stations. I would actually just recommend you do it take at your leisure, take the sites, go visit the beacons, um, because there are a lot of the tourist beacons on this route, a lot of the big name stations. Um, the Lave Cluster is kind of a big place, uh, the Bank of Zayons. Uh, there are some really sort of key locations spread around this route. Um, now I'm doing all of the locations, including the one here that you can't go to unless you are elite. Um, so those of you who are new to this game, do note some of the um, some of the optional extras on the rare trade route are uh, systems that are locked by permit. Um, so just be mindful of that. And as you can see, I actually didn't even need my fuel scoop on this route. I could have taken more cargo space. So now I'm actually going to throw it open to discussion. What I'm going to do is go through and detail what my findings were when doing this. So this took 58 minutes to do. I know that because I recorded the video um, and the video was 58 minutes long. That includes four interdictions um, and one nipping out into the kitchen to get a cup of tea. Uh, it raised just from the rare trade goods alone, not from doing any missions on extras or the extra I got for the bounties or the extras I've got from uh, doing um, scans and stuff like that just the rare trade goods alone was 1.7 million credits and so it was 1.7 million credits in an hour now personally that doesn't sound very good it doesn't sound like this is uh, a really viable way of making money considering how difficult it is to do how much there is to do to it however I still think it's worth doing the full beans um, at least once going around collecting missions that are going your way doing the whole full beans tour um, for new players just because you get to see some of the iconic stations and places uh, but like I say I'd leave that open to players I would also like to see Frontier uh, raise the drop rates on some of these rare goods to make it more profitable I think that would be fair I think something like increasing the amount or decreasing the amount of time you have to wait before it respawns one of those two things just to increase this because this is not some spammy glitchy cheesy way of making money this is a proper full-out traders route this is like the old spice road you know this is a proper ingrained in the game since the start of the game this was a legitimate way of making money uh, for traders this was a route that was well trodden and well traveled because it was profitable and i would like to see a return to that because if they brought this back if they made the rare trade route a decent way of making money uh say scale it about i don't know three or four million credits per hour or four or five i think that would really really help the community because you would get people like me trading on it and then people like the pirate orc and the dark marauders pirating on it and it would create this environment where it's like the old Silk Road. Instead of people spamming EDDDB looking for point-to-point -point slave trade runs and just doing bulk slave trading as their primary way of trading. Um, I think this is more interesting, I think this is more fun and I think bringing it back and increasing it would help the community and create the vibrancy that I would like to see in open. But as always, I'm just throwing that question out to you. Do you think 1.7 million per route is enough money or would you like to see it increased? And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching.